Hey guys, good evening everyone. Welcome to the uh, part two of our daily stock market insights today. This is, by the way, Miss JD. And um, in the first video, I was able to uh, cover the uh, first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. First seven stocks. And if you have not watched that video yet, I'm going to uh, put a description, uh, the link down in the description section. So uh, you can also check that out. In the meantime, I'd like to go ahead and uh, continue. Uh, let me just check if you guys have dropped a comment in our first video. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, just continue. So far there's SMC and then JFC. Let's see if we'll uh, cover it from here. So there's C here. Yeah, so we'll just go through this list as um, two of the requests are also uh, in the succeeding stocks here. Okay, game. So let's start with Dell. By the way, if this is your first time to watch our video, uh, you guys are invited to hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell so you're always updated whenever I have new videos. You know, I do this every single day, sometimes once a day, sometimes twice a day. It depends on my availability. <laughs> okay, so um, I hope I'm able to, um, I was able to um, uh, give good insights from yesterday's uh, review. So let's go ahead and uh, continue. Let me just set up my tools. By the way, I'm using a Bollinger Band and our RSI here as our main indicators. I, I don't tinker with the uh, tool uh, settings, but you definitely can um, adjust these depending on your need. But I'm okay with um, my default settings from the Bollinger Band. Um, the one at the center here is the MA20 line. Okay, and then I have my RSI here. So let's start with uh, tell. So this is tell. Okay. Let me see. Still, so, uh, the selling pressure is still there. Uh, but we're, I think, almost, almost at the um, oversold area. So I'm thinking. So if it will respect. Uh, where was that? Let's see if it'll continue to respect this uh, price area over here. Okay, so that that is a key level. Let's see what about this? Yeah, ah, I think this one. So it looks like it is um, trying to um, let us see if it'll respect this uh, key areas over here. So your previous resistance here, resistance, and then your support over here. So we managed to. Um, revisit that line and uh, in today's uh, performance it is actually a doji and looks like it landed at the area where we could potentially have our support and uh, that could be a support because you have two resistances right at that level as well and we're going back to that key area uh, so no dividends release yet so all you have to do is just observe I bet a lot of you guys here who are into uh, tell are long-term investors of this stock. So if you want to add more, um, you can probably check this out and see if there's a green candlestick that might come out um, in tomorrow's performance. Uh, we're slightly higher in terms of volume, starting to pick up over here. And uh, hmm, let's see, let's see though. It's uh, it could be a make or break tomorrow. But definitely that's a, a support area let's take a look at our jfc jfc on the other hand is uh, looking attractive at the moment so notice we are at the ma20 level and the bounce happened right at the ma20 line so um i'd say this is a bounce for jfc if you want to still accumulate and add more um, volume here so try to observe how the uh, market performs tomorrow let us see if there will be fluctuations in the price 
then at any time it goes near your MA20 line, uh, that would be a much better haggle in terms of uh, price. So still, uh, this is starting to show some positive actions in uh, in terms of uh, price improvement. Okay, so overall, this stock has already dropped significantly, and we all know this is one of the more popular. Um, this is one of the most popular uh, index or stocks stock in the index uh, because a lot of people are also invested in here. So just find your entry. I know this stock has been badly hit by the uh, pandemic. But there was a news around this. I think I read a news about uh, JFC opening. Yeah, this is the one. So um, let's see if this is the reason why the stock has has um, performed well today. So Jollibee opens a, a store in Rome. This one over here. And this one is in Via Ottaviano, a location eight minutes away from the Vatican City. So imagine that. Um, looks like the cash flow of this uh, company is still surviving or still good because despite the pandemic um, around the globe, uh, they're still able to uh, perform this. Uh, so let us see. Let us see. I have not really opened the uh, PSE Edge, uh, but um, that's... A, a sign of recovery, if I may say, uh, because um, number one in the Philippine market, we're starting to open up and um, companies have started to innovate in order for their businesses to survive. So a lot of, um, you know, uh, delivery services are also starting to emerge. And uh, this means Jollibee and all the major uh, restaurants are now able to uh, continue the operations and then of course there there is a lot of there are a lot of improvements in how they run their business but they're back right on track now um, it could just take some time that could be the reason why uh, sideways is still uh, ongoing at this point but definitely I'd have to say this is the accumulation stage for Jollibee and some of the major stocks in the index so let's just use the MA20 line, guys. So 137, 138, that would be a good um, price level to um, to enter at. Okay, let's continue. BPI. BPI, on the other hand, revisited the MA20 line and we're still on sideways. How does the... Uh, so there's, there's no uh, news so far. So still at the MA20, let's just observe if uh, it will continue to hold at that level. So we all know that when we are starting to move higher than the MA20, your MA20 could potentially be uh, your support. Um, slightly higher or lower, still the same because it, you know, we all know that it is an area when you you create a support, don't, it's not right on the spot. Okay, so it could be 65 or. Uh, yeah, 65 to 64 around the key level. Next is C. So the chart of C looks almost the same as our DITO. So if I am to plot our uh, key levels here, um, the nearest support would be 485. And we just do not know. Um, maybe tomorrow, because Friday is a profit-taking day, but given the setup, this could already mean a sign of, um, you know, a bounce. Reason for saying that is uh, if you look to the left, you see this. That could already mean um, this key level is um, triggering that bounce. So really exciting um, days or even months ahead of us for all the stocks related to the telco company. Even though Chelsea is technically not the telco company right but it's still associated with a detail so that's a good sign 485 that is our support okay next is sec b sec b is uh, oh well this stock uh still no volume but you know what's interesting is that of course their financials are, are looking 
just fine, but the sentiment overall is uh, negative uh, in the banking sector. That's why it's taking some time before our banks are able to recover. If there's some recovery, it's just, you know, slight bounces and then it goes back to uh, the support areas. So let me just go ahead and plot it at 87.04 or 87 to be exact. Uh, because if you go down the screen to the left and you see this. So that's the nearest area where you have some consolidation right there. So now I'm plotting that as our possible support. Okay, the next one is BDO. BDO as well. Look at that. Still sideways. So I personally have a um, uh, significant amount invested here in my portfolio. And uh, I'm just totally fine with it because look at this. Look at where we are at the moment. We're still at the bottom over here. So, so I was able to uh, accumulate around this uh, key area, maybe less than 88. I will not disclose the exact amount, but definitely less than 88. Um, right here so each time you know every payday i just allocate some funds i distribute that among all the stocks i currently have in my portfolio and uh, i have one in the banking sector and this is a bdo and uh let's see if it drops around 85 57 uh, i think about it i I'd, I'd observe first number one i check if the timing is good if it's a payday then we can add more um, if not, then we'll just see which of uh, my stocks in my portfolio have uh, a much better, uh, you know, setup at that time. So just go ahead and plot that key level because obviously it's so obvious as you can see here. One, two, three, four, five accumul accumulation right here or consolidation right here. 85 uh, at the 85.57 area or 85.50 so I think that's a solid support area right now let's take a look at Ali Ali still what looks like it is trying to create a support at this key level 29 looks like it right because if you look to the left you will see this one and two and over here, even though we are slightly lower than the MA20 line, what's interesting is it's just consolidating at that area. So maybe uh, anywhere between 29 and 30, that's already a good area to uh, start buying. And look at this. There's a uh, slight increase in the volume. See that? So maybe that's something you can check out. Yeah, so what you can do as well, try to do this, okay? There, and then it's like an asymmetrical triangle, really. Um, let's find out if it will continue to break either of uh, the two sides. So if it, rem if it breaks this area, okay, your threshold is um, up to this level. Maybe if it goes lower than this, if it goes lower than 29, uh, then you can cut your, you know, cut your losses. Um, however, my best recommendation, because this area here is a bit risky, wait for it to break out of this uh, downtrend uh, resistance over here. So this is currently acting as your resistance. It was, uh, it created a lower high, but in the event it breaks that then you have a possible shift in the direction, okay? It might potentially create this time around a higher high, okay? Do you see that? It might, uh, once it breaks that, it can probably create something like this. Yeah. It will use this resistance first, and then when it goes up, it goes up, it will create a higher high around probably 33.90. Okay, so interesting, interesting day for uh, Ali over here. What about MBT? 
oh, MBT looks like this is already a bounce. Yeah, it just um, accumulated or consolidated at that uh, key level over there. So if uh, you are to consider MBT, well, very attractive setup for position traders like me. Um, 38.10 or 38 level, anywhere between that to the current uh, price level is a very attractive key area to start accumulating. Um, we also had some foreign buying that happened today. And even though we're already at the overbought, um, given that the drop that we currently have here, there's still some room for, um, for the price to push or to move higher. Okay, do you see that? Really, really attractive. Wow. So as you notice, it has dropped significantly and then massive drop right here. So if it make, it might take some time before the key areas uh, we're looking at will be reached, you know, because uh, we're still not out of the woods yet. However, if this stock will consistently give out some dividends, you're still safe. Look at that. One. So once a year or twice a year. There's another one here, but it's not that clear. 13%. Wow. So this bank also gives out dividends. So if it might take some time, at least you are receiving some dividends there. It's a passive income for, for you. SMPH. SMPH is also giving out some dividends, but we don't know how many times a year. So try to observe that. So technically, this is still sideways for SMPH, as you can see here. Okay, do you see that? We're um, higher than the MA20 line, so we will most likely uh, see some consolidation. Two things can happen here because the volume is still not that uh, huge yet. So maybe around 29.98, it will stabilize there first. And um, actually, we're already starting to pick up in terms of the momentum. People are already showing interest in this stock. Uh, so 29.28, guys, that is something that you can consider too because uh, we're already higher than the MA20. So your MA20 could be a key area of bounce there. Now, let's take a look at JGS. Wow, what's this? 5%. 5%. June, it also gave... Uh, so, twice. So, this is interesting. So, if you'd like to consider this, well, X date is uh, October uh, 27. So maybe uh, a lot of people, especially the institutions, will really show some interest here. 5% for a dividend in one release is uh, already a good, a promising um, payout. So I have a feeling, uh, especially because we we're higher than the MA20 line, so this is a good setup. Maybe just, you know, just to take advantage of the dividend play there. Um, what you can do is uh, try to um, add some volume here at this key area. This used to be a resistance in the short term, right? So maybe if you can um, try to do some test buys here and let's see if it will continue to push the price higher. Then uh, good because, oh yeah, look at that. In the uh, weekly chart, we're actually just sitting right at the MA20 line. So um, something interesting, right? There's also foreign buying that happened here. So let us see if um, this thing will also uh, contribute to the possible bullish sentiment in the market. All right. Okay, 62.90, that's the key area I'm looking at. I wonder if I can add a more, what's this? Select. Watch review alerts. We have reached. Oh, I only have a maximum of 10. Okay, let me just write that down. 
I'm also interested in watching this. ICT. ICT. Well, we are still uh, respecting the uptrend channel in the weekly chart. Let us see, though, in um, the daily, if it is going to give us the same. All right. Um, let's try that. Hmm. So look at that. It's still respecting. Actually, we're very near the MA20 line. So if you want to consider that, wait for it to drop probably near 110. And if uh, it respects this uh, uptrend uh, support, then good. But if it negates that, it goes lower than that, you know what to do. If you are trading, number one, if you are trading, then practice uh, cutting your losses early in the game. Don't wait for it to, to drop so much before you cut your loss because that's really difficult to swallow. Okay, um, so in case it drops, try to as early as, I mean, before you even enter, anticipate that key level. So if that key area is reached, so you can cut your loss. But if you're a long-term investor here, uh, you're already halfway, by the way. So this was the top. See that? So we're already almost there. So if you're a position trader for me, I'd say this is not my game. MWC, okay, so again, this stock uh, has been already profitable. Yeah, it has climbed so much, and people are now taking profit. Third day straight of a red. Um, let us see if there will be a slight bounce there, but normally when it bounces, if the sentiment is really overall negative or uh, bearish, when it drops and it recovers, it creates that lower high. So normally, so if we are going to uh, anticipate that, this could be the uh, channel over here. If, okay, it might create something like this. There. Okay, so be careful there. So even though if there will be some possible uh, possible bounce, I'd say not for me at this point, not yet, because it might go down further. So the next support I am looking at would be uh, this, actually. I'm not saying it will happen tomorrow right away, but could be in the coming days. So it might even overshoot here down below. And uh, let's find out what happens around the 1303 though. Okay. All right. URC uh, is giving us a bounce. Okay. So that's the support. 134.50 or 134.55. And um, why did we say that that is a support? There was an accumulation or a consolidation that happened here. This used to be a resistance. There's also a resistance right over here. So those key levels will validate our our insights, right? So for now, 134.55. What about the news? Do we have any? No, not much. Okay, what about SM? SM, wow, there's a big volume. What could this be? So there could be something in here that is um, they're prob probably brewing something, right? So just in case the um, price fluctuates, if you want to get in here, 80, 851, 80 or 852 uh, for me is the support area. This is still sideways movement though, okay? And uh, who knows with this massive uh, volume right here that could mean a, a continuous bounce probably around one week one to two weeks like what happened here right uh, for this one so when you had that huge volume it uh, rallied for what one two three four four days five days and how much is that a 
if you took advantage of that volume, you could have gained uh, just 6%. But that's fine. Who knows? This could mean something. Do we have any news? Six days ago, not that much. So the chart is just telling us that it's about time to change the direction of this stock. What about Globe? Globe? Mm -hmm. So there was a three day trade of uh, bearish sentiment. There's a slight recovery uh, on this day. However, there's an MA20 line blocking the way. So I'm thinking this is still respecting MA20 being a resistance at the moment. And so just be extra careful because this stock has started to uh, manifest some uh, lower lows right over here. So we could also have a continuous decline. So there, that's uh, your key level. Where could it bounce next? Uh, I think around here, around this level, 2005 area. But mind you guys, you know, um, right now people are just um, excited about the fourth telco or the third telco and the other telco companies because um, Globe and uh, PLDT have uh, dominated the uh, the market uh, for for several years now and uh, looks like not a lot of people are really very satisfied with the service so they're looking forward for to see um, some more companies opening up and offering a much better service so let's see this one though gives you a regular dividend so that's a good passive income right there but still it's not very expensive right what about fni fni wow why did we do a gap up two months ago so it's just uh, probably uh, just a bounce so it started to push the price higher so that's good it's a green engulfing candlestick and then there's some more buying sentiment probably what happened here is just you know basic concept of filling the gap because there is a gap up that happened uh, it is now filling that gap so it good thing it even filled the gap within the day and so um, I have a feeling if it'll tomorrow is a profit taking day, so we don't know, but definitely I, I have a strong feeling that it will go back to the MA20 line. I don't know if it'll break that MA20 line, or number two, it could just stabilize there before it takes off again because that was your resistance and now could be your support, right? 100, no, 119. That's the key area I'm um, looking at. The next one is, so we're done with Globe FNI. Let's talk about AC. AC as well is, wow, consolidating um, at the uh, um, higher level. Okay, so it just uh, retained the price here. So maybe uh, there is still... Yeah, there's still momentum right here. It's still at the 50s level. So just use your uh, MA20 line as a, your as your support. If you want to add uh, some more volume or if you want to consider entering right here, actually. Okay, so that is our uh, support. 709, guys. Okay, so if you want to get in here, just, of course, understand your profile, you personally. You have to reflect on that. Uh, why do you want to engage in the stock market? Do you want to be a trader or are you an investor? Okay, so either way, even if you're a trader or an investor, you have to master, number one, you have to know your role, what kind of profile you have. So you know your tolerance level to risk and, um, of course, your profit-taking levels. That, that will influence that kind of mindset. At the same time, Regardless of your uh, profile, I highly, highly recommend for you to be very vigilant in watching the news. Number two, take the time to understand their financial um, situation given uh, the uh, 
period we are in, which is a pandemic. Number three is study the technicals. There are a lot. So if I'm to click this, the list is so long. There are so many indicators out there that you can use. You don't even have to follow mine. You only have to use Bollinger Band. Um, but of course, uh, the key message here is try to look for that uh, indicator that helps you become proficient at, at trading or investing and uh, stick to that. It's not good for you to hop from one indicator to the other because it does not, um, you know, it does not build the skill. Do it like this one. What we are doing, and I've been doing this for more than a year now. I have a YouTube channel. I've been recording uh, my insights for more than a year now. I don't use anything. I only use this. And it is still a journey, you know. Um, we want to make sure that our accuracy rate is always improving. So that's why I, I make it a point to just use this. And another best practice that I can share to you is that, uh, you know, there's the recording. There's this video and then tomorrow is a market day. Uh, what I would normally do is go back to these videos that I record and uh, try to understand if uh, my, my thought process is aligned to how the market ended. That way, if uh, my, my thought process is correct, then I reinforce that in my trades. I've been doing that for the past one year. So you know how they would um, advise you guys to keep a, a journal of your trades? This is my way of journaling my thought. It's not my trade though, but um, the thought process itself. I document this. So if I become an expert someday, right? If I become a super expert someday and I go back to how I... I see my charts 10 years before or 10 years backward. I still have a record of those through my videos over here. So I'm really excited to look back to my, my analysis from way, way back. So only if I have the time. But for now, um, the practice I do is on a daily basis. So this video is going to play again uh, after the market closes tomorrow. So maybe that's something you can also do if you if you can go back to my videos, probably you can do the same. Try to understand the thought process or did it materialize in in your trades or in how the market uh, behaves for this these stocks that we review. All right, so I think that's it. Those are my bite-sized uh, words of wisdom for tonight. Uh, good luck in your trades tomorrow. Be extra careful. It's a Friday, you know, it's a profit-taking day. And uh, let's uh, catch up again uh, tomorrow. In the meantime, thank you and good night. Bye-bye.